Okay, so what's the big deal with chase points? Points people obsess over these because of the 5 over 24 rule, but are they actually that valuable? In today's episode, we're going to cover some of the best ways to use your chase points so you can decide for yourself. Before we jump in, if you're just getting started with points and miles, and you're like, what is the 524 rule? We offer a free points and miles 101 course for you to help you earn points for your first redemption. The free course covers acronyms, impacts to your credit score, how to get free upgrades just by sending a quick email, and how to easily get top tier status with many of your favorite airlines and hotel chains. You can grab the free course at geobreezetravel.com slash free course, or check out the link in the description box. Okay, let's jump in with how to use chase points for pretty much any domestic airline in the United States, even the airlines that chase points don't transfer to. One great use of chase points is to fly on American Airlines flights, even though Chase does not transfer over to American Airlines, built as the only flexible currency that does. So for example, if we wanted to fly one way from Philadelphia over to Miami for just one person on July 3rd, we would click one way, redeem miles on AmericanAirlines.com and click search. Let's say that we just want to do a nonstop flight. We have a few different options here where most of them are going to be 12,000, maybe 21,000, 16.5 thousand points in economy and then starting at 30,000 points in first class domestic. This is just a short flight, so I'm not sure I would want to spend this many points just to fly this three hour flight. Furthermore, if you don't have American airline miles available, how would you fly this with Chase? Well, one option would be to go to British Airways and click on book, book with Avios, from Philadelphia to Miami for that same date on July 3rd, one way only, in economy for one person. It gets flights here. There are three of those flights that are available on British Airways. So if you're available on any of these routes, this could be a good way to save some points. Note that on American Airlines' own website, they do have quite a few more available flight options since Philadelphia and Miami are both American Airlines hubs. Not every single flight here is going to be available on British Airways. Like for example, the 6.27 a.m. flight is not available through British Airways, but this 1.58 p.m. flight is. And it would be 12,000 points if booked directly through American Airlines, but on British Airways to do that economy flight, it would only be 9,000 points plus $5.60. So that'll save you 3,000 points right there. Alternatively, if you wanted to do this short flight in business class, it would be 16.5 thousand avios plus $5.60 versus what American Airlines is charging for that same flight, which is 30,000 points plus $5.60. So a great way to take American Airlines flights by using Chase points is by transferring those points over to British Airways instead. If you're more of a Delta person, you can often find Delta flights for cheaper through Virgin Atlantic. Chase points don't transfer over to Delta, but they do transfer to Virgin Atlantic and you can often get the same flights for way fewer points. Virgin Atlantic has this free resource, the Reward Seat Checker, and you can search for flights with Delta Airlines here. Technically, it's only going to show you some UK airports, but here's a trick, you can pick any airport you want and then say you wanted to fly from London to Atlanta sometime next summer, click check for reward seats. And then from here, you would go up to the URL and then instead of your origin being London Heathrow, you can change this to whatever you want. Let's say Minneapolis to Atlanta. And here it'll show you which dates have good award availability on Virgin Atlantic for these Delta flights. So July 3, 4, 5, 11, 12, a few other dates tend to have good availability. On July 18th, there is low availability, and for some dates like July 9 or 10, according to this chart, does not have any partner availability on Virgin Atlantic with Delta planes. So if we like one of these dates, let's say that we like July 12, we just make a note of the date that we like, and then click book my reward ticket. This will pre-populate the route for you on virginatlantic.com from Minneapolis over to Atlanta. Let's say we just wanna do one way for now, and this would be on July 12. For one passenger, always show flexible dates, click on points, and then economy is fine for now, we'll click go. And we do see that flight is available for 8,500 points plus $6 in taxes and fees on July 12. If you wanna see the full calendar here, go to the URL, change flexible dates, flexible calendar, and then here you can see all of the different dates where there is availability to fly this route from Minneapolis 
over to Atlanta for only 8,500 points plus $6 in taxes and fees in economy. This is so much cheaper than if you went through Delta directly. If we go to delta.com and search for that same route, Minneapolis, over to Atlanta, one way on July 12th. Say your dates are flexible, shop with miles for one passenger in main cabin. They are going to be charging 27,000 points. They have it available every day, but if you are flexible on your days, you can cut that cost into about a third by moving your points to Virgin Atlantic instead. And if all you've got to work with is Chase points anyway, Chase doesn't transfer over to Delta, so your best bet is going to be moving them to Virgin Atlantic, picking one of these dates where there is award availability and only having to pay 8,500 points plus $6 in taxes and fees. What if your main airline is United? So United is a transfer partner with Chase, but you can oftentimes get these same flights for cheaper with Air Canada. So for example, let's look on united.com and say we wanted to fly from Las Vegas over to San Francisco. Sometime next August, just one adult in economy. Make sure you click one way, checkbox book with miles, checkbox flexible dates. Go ahead and click on find flights. So here we do see quite a bit of saver award space where it's gonna cost 7.8 thousand miles plus $5 and 60 cents in taxes and fees to fly this route from Las Vegas to San Francisco on United. Let's see what Air Canada would be charging. So while Chase does transfer over to United Airlines, it also transfers over to Air Canada. So we could click on one way, book with airplane miles from Las Vegas over to San Francisco. This date that we liked was August 1st for one adult and we'll go ahead and click on search flights. And here in economy class, we do see that you can get that exact same flight from Las Vegas to San Francisco for only 6,000 points plus $47 Canadian. So if you are fairly points poor, Air Canada would be the better option where you're paying fewer points. If you would rather reduce your taxes and fees, then paying a few extra miles and paying lower taxes with United would be the better way to go, just depending on if you would rather save on money or save on points. For other domestic route options, you could also transfer Chase points into Southwest Airlines, or you could transfer it over to JetBlue. These airlines don't have some kind of alliance partner where you might be able to get the exact same flight for cheaper, like we were able to show with American Airlines and British Airways, or with Air Canada and United, or with Virgin Atlantic and Delta. If you wanted to move your points over to Southwest or JetBlue, it would just be a one-to-one -one ratio to do that. I don't personally love moving points into Southwest or JetBlue because it's very revenue-based where every point that you move over, you're almost always going to get 1.5 or 1.6 cents out of that point, and we can usually get better than that through some different transfer partners. However, if you're in a pinch, you need some Southwest points, you need some JetBlue points, and you would rather just save money on those cash flights and do a pretty simple redemption, Chase points are great for those as well. If you're enjoying these types of step-by-step -step tutorials so far, please let me know by clicking that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel for even more points and miles tips every week. We release a weekly video with these types of step-by-step -step tutorials and also a weekly episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, where I interview diverse points enthusiasts from all walks of life about the types of strategies and points that don't always make it to page one of Google. So in that last set of tutorials, I mentioned that I wouldn't really recommend moving chase points to United. Well, that's true, except in one instance, which can be really valuable for getting a free flight across an entire continent. Here's how. There is one case where it might make sense to transfer your chase points over to United, and that would be if you want to do a United Excursionist perk, which you can only do if you are booking this kind of itinerary with points through United's website. Here's how to get this set up. So first, you'll go to united.com, and then you'll click on this advanced search button. From here, you want to say flight only, book with miles, multi-city. There are some rules that you need to go through in order for this to work. So first of all, assuming you're based in the US, your first flight has to start in the US and your last flight has to end in the US. And then your middle leg, which is the one that you're gonna get for free, has to both be outside of the US for both the beginning and end of the flight, and they have to be in the same region as defined by United Excursionist. Europe is the easiest one because pretty much everything from London all the way to Istanbul, Turkey counts as Europe. Africa is split into two regions where there's Northern Africa and then Southern Africa, which is what we're going to do here between Johannesburg and Accra. Asia is split into multiple regions with Japan being its own self-contained region. South America is split into Northern South America and Southern South America. We have an entire training on how to do United Excursionist Park, which I will link right here. 
But for today, the example we're gonna do is from DC over to Johannesburg. And let's change this to August 6th. Johannesburg over to Accra, Ghana, which we will do on the 13th. And then Accra back to Washington DC on the 17th. We'll just do this in economy for now. And then let's go ahead and click on find flights. So here we're gonna select the first leg, which is from Washington DC over to Johannesburg. Let's say that we like one of these. Let's go ahead and pick this one, which would go from IAD over to the New York region and then over to Johannesburg. And then if everything is set up correctly so far, the second leg should zero out where you can get your flight from Johannesburg over to Accra, Ghana for zero points plus some taxes and fees. These would both be operated by Ethiopian Airlines where it's gonna route from South Africa through Ethiopia all the way back into Ghana and you don't have to pay any points for this. So this is your free flight where you can go ahead and select one that you like and the calendar shows a few other dates that you could pick from as well. And then from there, all that's left to do is pick on the last leg of your flight. You could go from Accra through Egypt. You could go through Brussels. Let's say that we like this one. And so this entire itinerary from Washington DC to South Africa to Accra, Ghana, all the way back to Washington DC would only cost 90,000 points plus $208 in taxes and fees. However, it gets better. Remember, the rules of the United Excursionist perk are your first flight has to start in the US, your last trip has to end in the US, and then your second leg, which is the one that you get for free, has to start and end outside of the US and be completely contained in one specific region, like Southern Africa. However, your itinerary does not have to be continuous. Like, let's say that you found a really good business class flight deal from JFK over to South Africa, and then you found another one from Ghana back to New York. But you have no way to connect those two different good flight deals that you found somewhere else. That is where the United Excursionist Park can really come into play. So here's the level two hacky hack of this. You're still gonna go to United, click on the advanced search, flight only, book with miles, multi-city. Let's say that you are based in Washington DC, but the only flights that you could find over to Africa were from New York. So let's go from Reagan and take a domestic flight over to JFK. We're gonna keep this one the same between Johannesburg and Accra. And then you need a way to get back with your positioning flight. So again, we'll need a flight from JFK back to Reagan. Now let's do this in business class because let's see if we can get that second leg completely for free in business class. Let's go ahead and find flights. So for this first leg, we'll pick a positioning flight that we like. Uh, let's say that we like this business class flight for 30,000 points plus $5.60. I know it's only an hour and a half, but I'll show you why you want to do this business class flight to start with. Now, since your first leg was in business class, your free leg, which is the second leg, can be in business class for free, or at least zero points plus a few dollars in taxes and fees. So you could do this 14 hour itinerary from Johannesburg through Ethiopia into Accra, Ghana for zero miles plus $40 and 90 cents. And now your last leg doesn't have to be in business class. You can just take this one hour flight back in economy where we see some saver space for about 9,000 points. So now here's your full itinerary. You're flying from Washington DC over to New York in business class for about 30,000 points. Your second leg, which is in business class is free and then your last leg, which is an economy, only costs 9,000 points. So for all three of these flights, you're only paying 39.2 thousand miles plus $52.10 in taxes and fees. Keep in mind, you do have to take this first flight. If you miss this first leg, the second leg and the third leg are going to get canceled and you will not be able to take your free flight from South Africa over to Ghana. However, the third leg is completely optional. In this particular example, you will want to take it because this imaginary person is based in Washington, D.C. and needs a positioning flight back home anyway. But if you are just interested in taking this free flight, this third leg is optional. You do have to pay for it with points, but it's 9,000 points. And if you would rather not take this last leg and just put it on the itinerary so that you can get everything to zero out in the second leg, that is absolutely an option as well. Not only do points people love recommending chase cards because of the five over 24 rule, but they also make it really easy to earn 5X almost anywhere. From October through December of 2023, the Chase Freedom Flex lets you earn 5X on purchases made through PayPal. So you can link up your Chase Freedom Flex to PayPal and pay almost any transaction that way to earn five points per dollar. 
the Chase Inc. Business Cash also lets you earn 5x on internet, cable, phone, and office supply stores. With this one, you can go to Staples or Office Depot and buy gift cards to wherever you shop. Sephora, Amazon, Airbnb, and then earn 5 points per dollar that way versus only earning 1 or 2 points per dollar if you go straight to those stores and pay with your credit card. If you're interested in the Chase Freedom Flex or Chase Inc. Business Cash or any other credit cards, we would greatly appreciate it if you use our links at geobreezetravel.com slash cards next time you're in the market for a new card. And if you're not sure what card is right for you, I offer free credit card consultations at geobreezetravel.com slash consultations. Next up is one of the most popular ways to use Chase Points within the points community, and it's not actually an airline redemption. Here's how to get 12 cents per point or more by using Chase Points transferred over to Hyatt. One of the fan favorites for using Chase Points is for Hyatt hotels, especially for hard to book hotels that are really aspirational, like, like the Alila Ventana Big Sur in California, or the Park Hyatt Kyoto in Japan. Let's say that you wanted to stay at the Park Hyatt Kyoto for more during cherry blossom season, where you're like, okay, maybe let's try the middle of the month, April 12th, make sure you click on use points and then find hotels. This is a really, really popular hotel. It is absolutely gorgeous. I've stayed there and it's just so picturesque right in the old town of Kyoto and it's completely luxurious. But there are only about 40 rooms on property. It's a pretty small hotel, so getting one of these hotel rooms on points can be a little bit tricky just with how limited their availability is. For example, on this date that we picked, April 12th, there is not any points availability. You could click on the points calendar to see how much they're charging for any particular day, but this just shows which days are peak days versus off-peak days versus standard days. And unfortunately, this doesn't really show which days are available or not. So here's a trick for how to see which days actually have points availability. I recommend using the website Aways, A-W-A-Y-Z, and you can also access this for free through the free built app. But what you would do is search for the particular hotel that you want, Park Hyatt Kyoto, for the date that you want. It's gonna say there's no availability to book for the selected dates, but if you do click on the hotel on the map and then click on this green button and then click on award availability, it will show you the entire calendar for when there is points availability and when there's cash availability and how much it's going to cost in cash versus points. So for example, on the 12th, there are no points rates left. If you wanna stay at this hotel on that particular day, you're gonna spend more than $2,000 to do so for one night. But if you are flexible with your dates and you're okay staying at the end of April, the cherry blossoms might already have bloomed, but they do have this date available on April 29 for 40,000 points or on the 30th for 45,000 points, saving you $1,700 per night on a standard room. Let's confirm that we can see this on Hyatt's website. So here, we would edit our dates to instead say April 29. Go ahead and click update search. And as promised, we do see this one king bed for 40,000 points at the Park Hyatt Kyoto on April 29. And the away site makes it really easy to see where there might be availability versus where you are just not going to find any availability. Another really popular way to use Hyatt points, which can be transferred over from Chase, would be to get some really, really luxurious suites for not that much money and not that much points. So for example, let's say we wanted to stay in Dubai sometime far out in the calendar. Let's pick August 7. Make sure that you check box the use points box on World of Hyatt and then go ahead and click on Find Hotels. And let's say we want to stay at the Grand Hyatt Dubai, which normally would be only $120 per night because August is hot in Dubai. So if you wanted to just do a cash rate there, August is a great time to do that. Um, you're going to want to stay inside where it's air conditioned, but it is only $120 on average per night or 12,000 points per night. So highly do not recommend using points for this but let's look at the different rates that we can get. So like I mentioned, don't get a standard room for 12,000 points if it's only gonna cost $120 because then you're only getting one cent per point, which is not a good rate at all with Hyatt. So if you do wanna stay in a standard room, just pay the $120 cash rate. But if you wanna stay in a suite, you can stay in something like this Magnificent Prince Suite for way cheaper than you would expect. Click on Select and Book, and so you could spend 24,000 points, you could spend 12,000 points plus $753, or 
sometimes they're going to have this special rate, the upgrade premium suite rate, where instead of 12,000 points and $750, you could just pay 9,000 points plus $171. It is the exact same room. You just have to make sure that they have this type of special rate available. It's available to everyone. You don't need to be a globalist or anything, but if the hotel does have the option to do an upgrade premium suite, take it because 9,000 points plus $171 for this incredible suite is a really good deal. How good of a deal exactly? Let's switch off the use points button and look at the suites. And if you wanted to book that print suite outright, even if it was a member save more rate, it would be nearly $1,200. And that is if it is full prepayment with no refund or no charges. Personally, if I'm paying $1,200 for something, I would like to have some kind of money back guarantee. And so the member rate for that would be $1,340 per night. So if you, instead of paying $1,340, paid $171 plus 9,000 points, you're getting about 13 cents per point in that case, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you can find any of those premium suite upgrade rates, especially somewhere like this print suite at the Grand Hyatt Dubai, jump on it. That is a fantastic deal. Okay, we have one last set of tutorials for you, and it covers how you can sometimes fly business class for less than 30,000 points to Europe with Chase Points. We're looking to demystify as many of these non-intuitive ways to move your points around so that you can save on flights through this channel. But if you're looking for even more next level ways to make the most out of your points and you're not sure how to do so, we have a couple of options for you. The first one is through the GeoBreeze Travel Patreon, which you can access through patreon.com slash GeoBreeze Travel. Each month, we prepare a members only video with personalized step-by-step -step tutorials based on the exact departure airports, destination airports, and points currencies our members request. We also host a group coaching session every month where we often have special topics and deep dives into different programs and you can ask any questions that you have about earning points, redeeming points, credit cards, or anything else in the open forum group coaching. And we have a lot of people who join the $5 level just to say, thanks for the free content on YouTube, Instagram, the podcast, and I am all here for that. Thank you, I appreciate it so much. The second option is for business owners or individuals who spend more than $100,000 a year on expenses. If that's you, we'd love to chat with you about our points portfolio management offer, where we can show you how to get some really incredible luxury travel with the amount of points that you can earn with that level of spend. You can book a free intro chat with us at geobreezetravel.com slash intro call. Okay, here's the play. If you can line up booking your flights with when Chase is offering different transfer bonuses, you can make your points go much further. Here's an example. Another great way to use Chase points is whenever there is a good transfer bonus. So I like this tool, the upgraded points.com transfer partner tool. Let's say, let's look at Chase Points for all partners and see what transfers are available and who has transfer bonuses in place right now. So I'm recording this in September and it looks like there are Chase transfer bonuses. Over to British Airways, there's a 30% bonus here. Marriott Bonvoy, percent, Aer Lingus for 30%. And all of these are almost instant. That's another thing that I like to keep in mind when I do transfers is I try to stick with the ones that say almost instant because I'm impatient, I'm antsy whenever I need to move points over and I don't like having to wait two days for my points to show up in my other account. Even this Air France one hour, I'm like, mm, if we can have it as instant gratification, that'd be great. So these three look really good with British Airways 30%, Iberia 30% and Aer Lingus 30%. And one of the cheapest ways that you can actually fly over to Europe in business class is with Iberia Airlines over to Spain. Their website is kind of clunky and not the easiest to navigate for finding where all of the award space is on the calendar for business class. So here's a trick that I like to use. On seats.aero, go to the search feature and then search from USA over to Madrid as the destination airport. Type in your departure date and then add however many days you are comfortable adding in there, whether you want a specific week two weeks or a month on either side and then you can also specify how many available seats you need and for operating carriers here type in ib for iberia and for cabin we're going to search for business class and then click go and so here we can see all of these different business class flights that are available one tip here as you're scrolling through the different dates 
I like to start with the ones that don't have AA as an option, because as you scroll over these different points prices, you're going to see the different airline codes like AA, which is American Airlines, BA, which is British Airways, IB, which is Iberia, so on and so forth. I like to find one that doesn't have AA as an option because if you're getting put on an American Airlines flight, that's often not going to show up on Iberia's website and you won't be able to grab that business class availability by booking through Iberia. So all of these have American Airlines, but here with this Alaska option, with Alaska, this would cost 60,000 miles plus a ridiculous amount of taxes and fees, more than $1,000, but it's a direct flight and the partner codes are either British Airways or Iberia. So I think this is going to be kind of promising for January 30th. Furthermore, let's see if there are any other Iberia options. So it looks like the main one, um, cause all of these are with American Airlines. So of course they're gonna have their own airline in the mix. So let's see if we can search for January 30th on Iberia's website. So we're searching from JFK over to Madrid on January 30th, click on pay with Avios, one passenger and click search. And unfortunately still no business class available there. Let's expand our search criteria a little bit more to plus or minus 28 days, still keeping everything else the same and click on search here. All right, Alaska opened up another one. So instead of the 30th, let's try for the 22nd. We're still seeing the same thing where the code share partners are either British Airways or Iberia. So maybe we'll have better luck on the 22nd on Iberia's website. Yep. And here we do see some business class availability for only 34,000 avios if we book this with Iberia. But if you're going to be moving chase points over to Iberia and there is a transfer bonus like this, that means that you don't need all 34,000 avios. Instead, you would need 34,000 divided by 1.3. So that's about 27,000, always round up. Because if you move 27,000 points over to Iberia, that'll get you more than the 34,000 that you need. You could also test what if you only move 26,000 over, then you're going to be just a little bit short. You'll only have 33,800 avios, which is just short of the 34,000 you need and you need to transfer in increments of 1,000 points. So what you would do is transfer in 27,000 chase points over to Iberia. That's gonna turn into a little bit more than 35,000 points. And then you can book this business class flight from New York over to Madrid and fly business class for less than 30,000 points one way. I hope you found those tutorials useful. Viewer requests on future topics are always welcome. So please let us know in the comments if there are any topics that you would like for us to do a deep dive on. In the meantime, if you like these types of tutorials, I think you'll really enjoy this video next.